Hi everyone, welcome to my home, and welcome to Storytime with Spoons Across America, and me, Miss Clarice. I'm so glad that you can join me today to hear a story of a remarkable woman named Edna Lewis. Edna was an African-American woman and chef who did some remarkable things with her food and fresh ingredients. Today's story is called, Bring Me Some Apples and I'll Make You a Pie. A story about Edna Lewis by Robin Galley. Are you ready for our story time song? Me too. And it goes a little something like this. S-T-O-R-Y, S-T-O-R-Y, story, 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 boom. Now you're ready to listen and learn. Bring me some apples and I'll make you a pie. calls a little gray bird, whippoorwill, whippoorwill. The melody echoes through the quiet woods and winds its way down the hill to the just waking farm. This is the sound Edna's been waiting for all winter long. Time to get up, she says, poking her sleepy little sister. I hear the whippoorwill. That means it's gathering time. I'm ready for the taste of spring. After breakfast, Edna and her sister head out to the fields to pick wild strawberries, the first fruit of the season. Mama says, better hurry, you'll need to outrun the rabbits to get all the berries. Daddy says, fill as many baskets as you can. Larder's empty. Sister says, one for the basket and one to taste. Etna says, there'll be strawberry shortcake for dessert tonight. A few days later, with the chill almost gone from the early morning air, Auntie and the children gather wild greens before the leaves unfurl. Mustard parsley, dandelion, and peppery watercress, too. Mm-mm, says Auntie, a fresh, crisp salad to nourish the heart and soul, as well as the body. Edna recites, but I have never tasted meat, nor cabbage, corn, or beans, nor milk or tea that's half as sweet as that first mess of greens. Spring turns into summer and Edna leads Daddy to a beehive she's found deep in the fragrant honeysuckle woods. He breaks the comb and gathers all the delicious dark amber nectar. Edna dips her finger in the bucket. Honey on hot sweet biscuits sweetens the morning, she says, smacking her lips. Then she recites, a swarm of bees in May is worth a load of hay. A swarm of bees in June is worth a silver spoon. A swarm of bees in July is not worth a fly. A warm breeze is blowing and it's cherry picking time. Edna races to the trees and ups the ladder to fill buckets and bellies with the ripe fruit. Edna says a deep dish cherry pie That'll be the reward for all our hard work. Brother says, look at that bird in the cherry tree. He's eating them one by one. He's shaking his bill. He's getting his fill as down his throat they run. When the wild blackberries are ripe, Edna's sister and brother forage early in the day before thunderstorms start to rumble. Sweet berries stain hands and lips and teeth blue. 
brother says the ripe ones come easiest off the vine, and the lowest ones are the sweetest. Watch out for snakes. They like berries too. And it calls across the brambles. How about we make a summer pudding or cobbler, or just have a bowl full of berries with sugar and cream? All the blackberry. Summer pudding? Blackberry cobbler. Which one would you choose? Summer pudding or blackberry cobbler? Blackberry cobbler? That does sound delicious. Summer pudding? I would choose summer pudding too. Long about midsummer, it's time to gather sun ripened peaches from the orchard. Edna eats them straight from the tree, and the warm, sweet juice runs down her chin. Mama says six perfect peaches make a perfect pie. That's true, Edna says, but the best dessert on a hot summer day is peach ice cream. And there'll be plenty of willing hands to help turn the crank on the ice cream bucket. Peaches, Auntie sighs, pure as angels, sweet as love. Edna plucks garden warm tomatoes from a vine heavy with fruit and places them in Mama's outstretched apron. Southern dirt mixed with southern sun makes a right sassy tomato, Mama says. My favorite lunch above all is a tangy tomato sandwich. In high summer, even mornings are hot and dry. Edna, brother, and sister stand at the edge of the cornfield in the shade of the pine trees where the night coolness still hovers. Corn on the cob makes the best summer supper, says brother. I say it's corn pudding. That does, says Edna. Skillet cornbread is my favorite, says sister. Then she sings. Sings. Wake up, Jacob. Days of breaking. Frying pans on and cornbreads bacon. Bacon in the pan. Coffee in the pot. Get up now and get it while it's hot. Edna skips beside brother down the farm lane to the leafy vineyard. Sunny clusters of muscadine grapes grow in wild abundance. Vines twisted to the treetops. Ripe grapes make a perfect afternoon piece. I love the jam these grapes will make, Edna says. Come winter, it will be a little taste of summer. Brother nods, on a cold day, there's nothing more comforting than a thick slice of bread piled high with Mama's grape jam. It's back to school just as the apples start to ripen. They crunch with every bite and taste as sweet as honeycomb. There's so much to do with good apples, says Edna. With the bushel of apples in the cellar, we'll have apple butter and apple cider and applesauce all winter long. But today I'll make apple crisp sweet and tart at the same time. Then she sings, don't ask no questions. And I'll tell you no lies, but bring me some apples and I'll make you some pies. And if you ask questions about my having the flour, I'll forget to use lasses and the pie, I'll be sour. <laughs> and the pie will be sour. As the first snow falls, Edna inspects the cellar. It is full of good things, nut cakes and cookies, honey and jam, three kinds of dried beans, rows of canned corns, jars of tomatoes, and crops of pickles line the shelves. You can never have too much summer, says Edna. Wow, all of that food they made by themselves using their land. The house fills with the aromas of cooking, warming, and the spirit on a cold afternoon. Long winter ahead, says Daddy. Without winter, there'd be no spring, says Mama. That's right, says Edna. And come spring, we'll hear the whippoorwill call. Then we'll all go gathering again. I 
I really enjoyed this book. This family worked together to gather their food and harvest it so they could reap the benefits during the colder months. Can you think of simple foods that you could make in your community garden or perhaps in your backyard? We'd love to hear what you're up to and what you'd like to grow at www.spoonsacrossamerica.org. To participate in more read-alouds or to complete the activity sheet that corresponds with the book, visit us at www.spoonsacrossamerica.org. Thank you for joining today. I'll see you next time.